Hello, friends, and welcome to the LSU Dynasties YouTube channel, the YouTube home of Legend Sports Universe, all-time dynasties, all the time. I'll keep the intro short. This is Game 4 of the All-Time Baseball League's 2027 Western League Division Series between the wildcard Denver Pilots and the defending champion Seattle Grinders. I'm going to kind of get two things right away here. This is my first time doing this. I don't want to waste too much time. The uh, Seattle Grinders lead the series 2-1. They won the first two games in Seattle, but Denver was able to mount a comeback in Game 3 and keep themselves in the series. So manager Horace Phillips is going to send out the Seattle Grinders this way. Gary Pettis will lead off playing center field. Bill Hinchman will be the designated hitter. Hinchman bats second. Dan Brothers will bat third playing first base. Roy Campanella, the best postseason player in the 10-year history of the all-time baseball league. His numbers are somewhat ridiculous in the postseason. Campanella bats fourth. Kirk Gibson will bat fifth playing left field. Batting sixth, Roberto Clemente patrols right. Batting 7th, Corey Seager. Seager had the big two-run double in Game 2 that pulled Seattle ahead for the comeback victory. Evan Longoria bats 8th. He will play 3rd. Longoria had the 10th inning walk-off single in Game 1 to lift Seattle. Batting ninth, playing 2nd, Damaso Garcia. And on the mound will be Tim Linscombe. 26-year-old Linscomb made 24 starts during the season. He went 7-4, a 2.34 earned run average. On the other side, manager Duran Johnson will send out the Denver Pilots. Francisco Lindor will play third base. Again, Lindor was moved to third base once the team drafted Joe Cronin, who we'll get to in a moment. Wade Boggs will be the designated hitter. Boggs bats second. Pete Browning will be out in left field. Browning bats third. Larry Doyle will bat second and batting fourth, somewhat surprisingly. That's because Willie McCovey, the all-time baseball league's all-time home run leader, McCovey bats fifth. He'll play first. Joe Cronin, as we mentioned, the rookie, batting sixth, playing short. Terrific rookie season for him. Tony Oliva gets the start out in right field. Oliva will bat seventh. Andre Dawson, the Hawk, patrols center. Dawson bats eighth. Batting ninth behind the plate, JT Realmuto. And on the mound, Bob Rush. Rush, 8-11, and 11, a 4.55 earned run average this year. Rush, a bit shaky, and now he is going to have to go and try to get Denver level in this series. So we are ready for the first pitch, CBM Stadium here in Denver. More than 40,000 on hands, about 60 degrees, no wind to speak of. We're ready. Game 4 Western League Division Series starts now. So rush on the hill as he will get himself set. He will face Gary Pettis. Pettis in there more for his defense and his speed. Rush finishing up some landscaping on the mound. He looks ready, and here we go. Ground ball to short. Picked, thrown, Cronin guns him down, and there's one away. So we're underway here in game four. Rush will now face Bill Hinchman. One out. Hinchman 3 for 11 so far in the series. Here you see around the horn, Lindor, Cronin, Doyle, and McCovey. Romudo behind the plate. 2-1 offering here from Rush. Fly ball out to left field. Browning eases over. He'll make the play, and that's two down. So good start for Rush. And that brings up Dan Brothers. Brothers on the season, 334. He was third in the Western League in batting. Three for eight so far in this series. He has drawn, I believe it's three walks. He's also been hit by a pitch. Full count here now as Rush works to Brothers. Pitching him carefully. Weak ground ball back to the mound. Rush pounces off. He'll take it himself. Throw to McCovey at first, and the side is retired. So three up, three down. Good start for Rush, as we said. We are midway through the first. Seattle nothing. Denver coming up. And it's my first time doing one of these live streams. I do do a one-pitch mode just in the 
sense of expediency. Um, so the game will usually take 35 to 40 minutes or so. Hopefully you will stay with me. I appreciate anyone checking in for a little glimpse of the all-time baseball league. So here's Tim Linscombe on the mound. Linscombe behind him, Longoria third, Seager at short, Damaso Garcia at second, Brothers at first, Campanella behind the plate. Lindor leads off, and Lindor has been the shortstop in Denver for a couple years. He moved over when the team drafted Joe Cronin in the first round this past season. So Linscombe's ready to go, as is Lindor. We will follow suit. Here's the delivery. And Linscombe misses on the 3-2 pitch. So he misses outside. Lindor is on with a leadoff walk. We'll see what Denver tries to get going here. Lindor can run a little bit, but he's not really too much of a base-stealing threat. Here's Wade Boggs. You can certainly hit and run with Boggs. Boggs 2 for 8 in the series with an RBI. Swung on and missed. They do send Lindor. Campanella's throw not in time. So Lindor swipes the bag, gets into scoring position quickly. Denver trying to put a little bit of pressure on Seattle here. So Lindor at second. That pitch was a called strike. 0 1 the count to box. That one looped. Center field. That's a base hit. Lindor holds. Not going to test anything there. Pettis gets that ball in quickly. Lindor seems to get a little bit of a bad break. So Boggs at first, Lindor on third, nobody out. Linscombe in early trouble here. He'll face Pete Browning. Browning 4 for 12 in the series. Fly ball, center field. Pettis coming on. He's going to get there. They're going to send Lindor. Pettis, pretty good throw here. Play at the plate. He's out. He's out. Pettis guns him down. Boggs takes second on the throw, but Gary Pettis with a huge play there cuts down Denver at the plate. We are still tied at zero. Oh, that could be huge. Don't blame Denver for the ag aggressiveness trying to put a little bit of pressure on Seattle. Here's Larry Doyle. Doyle one for three. Three RBIs. He had the, his one hit was the big hit in game three. A two-run double that gave Denver the lead. And that one misses down low, ball four. So Linscombe has already walked two here in the first. That'll bring up Willie McCovey. McCovey, as we mentioned, the ABL's all-time home run leader at this point. Four for 12 in the series. No home runs or RBIs for McCovey. He will look to change that here. 0-2 count. Two men down. And Linscombe ties him up inside. No runs, a hit, no errors. Two men left on. We're through one here. Game four, Western League Division Series. Seattle and Denver, scoreless. So Rush takes him out. He'll face Campanella. Campanella, what can you say about him? 7 for 13 in the series. A home run, 4 RBIs. His career postseason numbers are gaudy to say the least. We'll go and give a quick look here. Splits. Postseason. Campanella's career postseason numbers. 365, 13 homers, 34 runs batted in. A 1021 OPS. That is about as good as it gets, folks. So Campanella, keeping up his tradition of being a great postseason player, off to a great start in the series. Rush ready to deal. 2-2 two, two the count now to Campanella. Tries to hold his swing, but he can't. Looks like it didn't really matter. That was going to be a called strike anyway. So Campanella will grab a seat. One down. And that will bring up Kirk Gibson. Gibson 2 for 9 in the series with a pair of runs batted in. Rush, pitch away, but Gibson chases, swung on and missed, two down. So Rush in a bit of a groove here in the early going. He'll now face Roberto Clemente. 
Clemente 5 for 15 in the series with an RBI. Rush's offering. Misses inside. Ball four. So Clemente walked on four pitches there with two outs. The curveball misses. Now we'll bring up Corey Seager. Seager, three for 12 in the series with an RBI, as we mentioned. Big hit to break the tie. And to put Seattle up in game two as they ultimately went on to win. Line drive. Base hit in the center field. So Seager singles. A little bit of a turn. No test there. Dawson gets it in quickly. So Clemente holds it second. So we now have two men on. Up comes Evan Longoria. Longoria with the 10th inning walk-off single in game one for Seattle. Five for 13 in the series. Two runs batted in. Ground ball to third. Lindor picks it. He's going to go the short way to second. Get the force out, and the side is retired. So two men left on, still no score. We head to the bottom of the second. Seattle nothing, Denver nothing. So here comes rookie Joe Cronin. Cronin, 315 batting average in the regular season. Two for nine, two RBIs here in the series. He'll face Linscombe, who managed to get out of a shaky first inning thanks to a terrific play from Gary Pettis, making the play out in center, gunning down Lindor at home. Linscombe's offering. Tapped out in front of the plate. Campanella pounces. Cronin will be gunned down at first one away. So here's Tony Oliva. Oliva, 4 for 12 in this series. Strike three called. So good sinker there on the black. Oliva doesn't seem to have liked the call, but he's going to walk back to the bench. Two men down. So here comes the Hawk, Andre Dawson. Dawson one for nine in the series. Also has a walk. 2-2 two -two pitch from Winscombe. Ties him up, swung on, and missed strike three. So both pitchers, it's Winscombe now... Kind of seems in the groove there. Both pitchers holding them scoreless. We are through two. Game four, the Western League Division Series. Grinders, nothing. Pilots, nothing. We head to the top of the third. So Rush takes a slab again. He'll face Damaso Garcia here in the nine hole. Garcia, two for 12 so far in the series. 223 average on the season. Rush is offering. Garcia hits this ball pretty well to right center. It looks like it's hanging up a bit, though. Oliva tracks it down in the gap, one away. So here comes Pettis. Pettis 0 for 1. One, two offering. Freezes him. Strike three call. So two men down. As Rush continues to groove, here's Bill Hinchman. Hinchman 0 for 1 as well. That one just misses inside. And low. So ball 4 there on the 3-1 pitch. Two out base runner. And here comes Dan Brothers. Brothers is 0 for 1. Now 3 for 9 in the series. Rush now at 48 pitches here with two out in the third. And he frees his brothers there. Strike three call. So Bob Rush, at least the first time through the order and change, giving Denver everything they could have asked from him after a mediocre season coming through when it counts. We head to the bottom of the third. Seattle nothing, Denver nothing. So JT Realmuto will start things off in the bottom of the third in his career, 2 for 14 against Linscombe for a 143 average. Smash down to first. Brothers picks it, Linscombe covering. Brothers flips it to him, one away.
Al, thank you for giving a look. I'm still trying to find my way around here, but uh, <laughs> nice to do a live stream. I appreciate you checking in. Anybody else sees this now or after the fact, give Al's channel a look. Al does a lot of great stuff across all sports too. So we have, we have that, that much in common. Al turns out a bit more content than I do though. <laughs> so let's come now face Lindor. Lindor walked his first time up. It was gunned down at the plate by Pettis. This one into center field for a base hit. So a one out single for Lindor. He takes the turn. He's not going to go anywhere though. So the one out single from Lindor. Linscomb will now have to deal with him. Here's Boggs. Boggs one for one. Remember, Lindor stole second his first time up. Linscomb aware of that. Looks the first and he got him. Picks him off. Tim Linscomb. Great move to first. Lindor caught napping. Nice tag by Brothers. And there's two away. So now the focus is on Boggs. 1-2 pitch. Pull down to first. Brothers picks it. This time he'll take it himself. And the side is retired. So a hit, but nothing comes of it. We are a third of the way through. Seattle nothing. Denver nothing. Listening from work. That's what I usually do with your stuff. <laughs> I work from home. So I got, I got, my, I got my two laptops set up. Uh, doing doing my job and I when I listen to people that's just that's usually when I'm when I'm doing it so uh familiar territory there so here comes Campanella Campanella steps in top of the fourth rush has been terrific so far Campanella ground ball the first McCovey picks it he will ease over to the bag for the first out one away so in steps Kirk Gibson Gibson 0 for 1 First pitch here. Loop down the left field line. This looks like it may fall in, and it does. Gibson takes a wide turn, but he's not going to go. Browning gets it in quickly. But Gibson serves one out into left for a one-out base runner, and that'll bring up Roberto Clemente. Gibson, not really a base-stealing threat. You could send him in the right situation. I'm not sure this is that situation, though. So Russell will face Clemente. Clemente walked his first time up. And that one gets away. Well, Gibson didn't have to steal because he's going to get the base anyway on the wild pitch from Rush. Campanella, excuse me, um, Real Muto chases it down. But now runner in scoring position. Still one out. 3-1 to Clemente. Hit the other way. McCovey takes it over to the bag. Gibson will move over to third. So now two down. And that'll bring up Corey Seager. Seager one for one. So he was a first round pick from Seattle in last year's draft, the 2026 amateur draft. I will be doing a reveal of the upcoming uh, draft class that'll take place after this uh, postseason is over. The amateur draft, I do it in November. I do it postseason. Um, but I've just kind of sorted out the list of players who'll be coming into the league uh, next in next year's amateur draft, and it's a pretty robust list. So a lot of fun, a lot of fun, a lot of big names coming in. Um, but we'll stick to this game for now. Two outs, top of the fourth, man on third. Rush facing Seager. One and two, the count. Another one pulled down. McCovey, McCovey bobbles it, and he's not going to have a play. Seager safe at first. Gibson comes in to score, and the Grinders take a one nothing lead. McCovey backed up on that ball, and it just seemed to stay down on him. He thought it was going to come up a little bit. It didn't. Looks like a bad job by Rush there also not getting over to cover. He thought that was going to be a routine play, but Pitcher still has a job to do there. So it will go down as an error on McCovey. Mental error on Rush won't go in the scorecard, but it will go in the heads of all the Denver fans here who are now dealing with a one nothing deficit. So Seager at first. Longoria steps in. He's 0 for 1. Popped up. McCovey makes the play. But you can see the look on William McCovey's face. He is not a happy camper right now. 
but he certainly has the big stick to kind of atone for that mistake himself. We'll see if he does. We head to the bottom of the fourth. Seattle won, Denver nothing. Gary, I appreciate it. Thank you for checking in. So here we go. Linscombe to face Pete Browning. Browning 0 for 1. One one pitch. Browning hits it well to right, but Clemente is easing over there. He will have an easy play. No problems there for Roberto. One away. So Linscombe has settled in a bit after that first inning. My saying that tends to be the kiss of death for a pitcher, but we'll see what happens. He'll face Larry Doyle here. Doyle walked his first time up. First pitch here. Doyle rips it up the middle base hit. So a one-out single for Larry Doyle as Denver tries to level things up. So here comes McCovey. We mentioned he certainly has the ability to atone for that error with one big swing. There you see those career numbers. 257, the home run total. Again, that is tops in ABL history. This is the 10th season of the all-time baseball league. This is McCovey's second stint in Denver. Doyle on first. 3-0 pitch to McCovey. And that is ball four. So Linscombe pitching him carefully there. Knowing what he's capable of, but now he's pushed the tying run into scoring position. So here's Joe Cronin. Cronin 0 for 1. Tapped in front of the plate. Campanella threw him out last time. Ground ball to short, and there's an error. That ball is bobbled. They went for two, and they're going to get nothing. Everybody is safe. Seeger flips it there to Garcia. Throw is off the mark. That's going to be an error on Corey Seeger. So Seattle was able to capitalize on the Denver error in the top of the fourth, and now Denver has to make sure that Denver pays, that, that Seattle pays here. Bases loaded, one out. Tony Oliva at the plate. Oliva 0 for 1. Campanella and Linscombe trying to get on the same page here. That's out to left, and it falls in. Base hit. One run will score. Coming around, Gibson's throw. Not in time. Two runs score. McCovey comes in to score. Gives Denver the lead. Tony Oliva with a big clutch opposite field. Two-run single. And the Denver Pilots have taken a 2-1 lead over Seattle. So defense wins championships is generally something that's reserved for football, but you, you see it in, in play here right now. Both teams make defensive miscues. Both of them pay for it. One out. Andre Dawson stepping in. Dawson, they say career 278 hitter. Down season for him this year. But he can certainly do damage. Pops this one up. Infield fly rule will be in effect. Damaso Garcia is under it, puts it away, and there's two men down. So Linscombe is going to try to minimize the damage here. He's going to have to go through JT Realmuto to do it. Rounded out the first is first time up. Fly ball to right. Clemente is under it. Puts it away, and the side is retired. But the Denver crowd likes what they see here as the Pilots, as they try to get level in the series, have taken a 2-1 lead. We head to the top of the fifth. So Garcia will lead things off here for the Grinders. Facing Bob Rush. Rush so far, four innings, two hits, one run, unearned, two walks, four strikeouts. He is at 66 pitches so far. They'd love to get Rush through six. Two-0 pitch. Garcia out to left. Browning tracks it, puts it away, one down. So here's Gary Pettis. Pettis is 0 for 2. Struck out his last time up. 
pulls this one down the line past McCovey. That's a fair ball. Pettis can run. And this ball's going into the corner. Pettis is going to be thinking three here. No! Pettis pulls in at second. That is a shock. Gary Pettis, one of the faster guys in the league. That ball was down into the corner. And I think he just he thought that Oliva was getting to that ball a little faster than he was. Pettis could have made third there. He holds up at second, though. And here's Bill Hinchman. Hinchman's 0 for 1. Out to left. Falls in front of Browning. Base hit. Throw coming home. Pettis to the plate. He's gone down. What a throw. Oh, my goodness. Pete Browning guns down Gary Pettis at the plate. The second man thrown out at the plate this game, Pettis did it to Lindor in the first, and now Pettis is victimized by it here in the fifth. Denver stays up 2-1. What a play by Pete Browning. Great tag from Real Muto. Hinchman stays at first. And now up comes Dan Brothers. Brothers 0 for 2, pulls this one down, McCovey feels this one, takes it to the bag himself, and the side is retired. Oh, baby, what a play. So Pete Browning, terrific job out there. After Pettis declined to go for the triple attempt, he ends up gunned down, and I did not see that coming. That looked like, you don't think the Pettis is getting thrown out by many people. But a terrific job from Browning. We are still in the same situation midway through. Denver Pilots down 2-1 in the series, up 2-1 in the game. So Linscombe will stay on. He will face Francisco Lindor to lead things off in the bottom of the fifth. This one's had a little bit of everything so far. Defense has been huge. A couple of terrific defensive plays, a couple of bad defensive miscues. Lindor singled his last time up. Takes the 3-2 pitch, misses ball four. So the leadoff man is on. Lindor reaches for the third time in the game. And now here comes Wade Boggs. Boggs one for two. Boggs towards the gap. That's going to be extra bases. That is going all the way to the wall. Boggs heading into second. Lindor is going to come around third. Boggs is going to try for the triple, and he's going to get in there easily. Way Boggs. You don't see Boggs get too many triples, but it's a pretty expansive center field area out here. The gaps are huge out in Denver. And Boggs had all day to run. So now Denver gets themselves an insurance run. We're going to see how long Linscombe is going to stay in here. Nobody out. Boggs on third. Browning, who had the terrific defensive play last inning to gun Pettis down at the plate, now steps up. Browning 0 for 2. Flew out his last time up. And he will take the 3-2 Ball outside for the free pass. Linscombe has now walked five. Got to start thinking that Linscombe is going to, they're going to have to kind of get him out of this game to see some bullpen action going. But it seems like we are on the verge of unraveling for him, and Seattle does not want to let Denver get this series level. Here's Larry Doyle. Doyle one for one with a walk. Fly ball to center. Routine play. Pettis puts it down. Boggs is going to try to score. We're going to have yet another play at the plate. And Boggs is out by a country mile. Pettis throws out his second man at the plate. You know, Wade, Wade Boggs got a triple there, not because of Wade Boggs' speed. Wade Boggs got a triple there because of the ballpark. Sending Boggs on that play. Again, Denver is clearly trying to pressure Seattle's defense. But Boggs is not the guy to do that with. Good grief. 
Pettis threw him out by a mile. So that keeps it at 3-1. Browning does a good job of taking second on the throw. Pettis with his second outfield assist of the game. So now here is McCovey. McCovey 0 for 1. Two outs, Browning on second. Line drive, caught. Garcia snags it. So the side retired there. Big play by Domiso Garcia. But the Pilots add another. We head to the top of the sixth. Denver 3, Seattle 1, Game 4, Western League Division Series. So Bob Brush staying in. I think the hope was to get him through six, and he's on track to do that. This would probably be it for him. He's at 77 pitches right now. But if you had said you were going to get, again, not to put the cart before the horse here, but if you were to say that you were going to get six innings and one run out of Bob Rush coming into this game, you absolutely would have taken that. So here's Campanella. Campanella 0 for 2. Grounded out his last time up. Pulled to short. Cronin fields it. Throw to first. One down. So here's Kirk Gibson. Gibson one for two. Remember, the only run that Rush gave up, an unearned run, after an error by William McCovey. Gibson reaches for another one outside a little bit. Fly ball to center. Dawson is there. Puts it away, two down. So that'll bring up Roberto Clemente. It's only taken four pitches to get through the first, the first two batters here. Be interesting to see if Rush could could go out to start the seventh, depending, of course, how this inning wraps up. Clemente 0 for 1. Grounded out to McCovey his last time up. Line drive, and it gets clear. Base hit. Out in the right center, cut off. But Clemente takes the 1-1 pitch and serves it out there. So a two-out single. And here comes Corey Seager. Seager's error led to Denver's two runs, one for two. Ground ball to second. Go the short way to first, and the side is retired. No runs, one hit, no errors, one left on. We head to the bottom of the sixth, Denver three, Seattle one. So Linscombe's day is done. That'll bring in Greg Holland. We'll jump out for a quick little stat check here. Holland on the year, 4-1, 3 saves, 2.68 ERA in 66 appearances. So a terrific season for him. The line on Linscombe will close as follows. 5 innings, 5 hits, 3 runs, 5 walks, 3 strikeouts. So Holland will come in, try to hold things at bay to give Seattle a chance to get back in this year. Joe Cronin will lead things off against him. Cronin reached on the error his last time up. Swung on and missed strike three here. So Holland starts off by fanning Cronin here in the bottom of the sixth. Oh, and after a slider there, one man down. And I'll bring up Tony Oliva. Oliva with the big hit. The two-run single, his last time up, he's one for two. Those were his first two RBIs of the series. Swung on and missed. Holland ties Oliva up inside. So great start for Holland out of the pen. You know, Seattle is an extreme pitcher's park, easily the most extreme pitcher's park in the all-time baseball league. And I think sometimes the pitchers here, they're good their good numbers get over-attributed to that park. These guys are a solid staff across the board, not just a function of their park, though their park certainly does help. So Holland retires the first two. Here's Andre Dawson. Dawson 0 for 2 on the day. Popped out to Garcia in shallow center his last time up. This one in the hole, that's a base hit. 
So a two-out single for Dawson past the diving Seeger. And that will bring up JT Realmuto. Realmuto is 0 for 2. Dawson can run a bit, and Denver has played this game aggressively on the bases, right or wrong. That kind of seems to be their approach. Ground ball here to short. Seeger flips the short way to Garcia, and the side is retired. Nothing on a hit for Denver. We are now two-thirds of the way through, heading to the top of the seventh. Pilots three, grinders one. Steeler fan, how are you, sir? I hope all your boxing stuff is going well. I'll be getting back to that stuff shortly, but I appreciate you checking in here, man. No, I've not posted stuff on Operation Sports in, in a while. I've kind of had my hands in too many pots uh, at the moment. But regrettably, the title about the Fight Night project seems as though it is being shelved as they've taken the boxer share down um, on Xbox. So that's kind of killing that project at the moment. But I will be back to posting my the Legend Sports Universe Boxing Federation stuff shortly. So Bob Rush is going to start the top of the seventh. Rush is at 91 pitches, six innings, five hits, one run that was unearned, two walks, four strikeouts. More than Denver could have asked of him for sure. But manager Deron Johnson is going to try to ride him for as long as he can. So Evan Longoria leads off. Longoria is 0 for 2. Ground ball the third. Lindor makes the play. Throw to first. One down. Again, if you are a modern baseball fan wondering why Lindor is playing third, Lindor was moved over there once the team, once the Pilots drafted Joe Cronin. Um, Cronin came in as their shortstop. Lindor moved to third. Boggs tends to be the designated hitter in the Denver lineup at this point, although it would seem to make more sense for Lindor to be the DH. But that is debatable. What is also possibly debatable is the end of the day for Bob Rush. Koji Uehara is going to come in in this game in relief. Very nice hand from the Denver fans here for Bob Rush for his effort today. So Uehara, if you remember, Uehara was with Seattle to start this season. Uehara on the year. Of course, he's combined, so we have to go to this board, but that's all right. We'll take a little check in here. So Uihara's combined numbers on the year, 7-0, two saves, 3.24 earned run average in 61 appearances. I'm going to check real quick how he was acquired. He was released by Seattle at the end of August in a somewhat, somewhat puzzling move. So Uihara now gets to try to put the screws to his old team. But the story so far, Bob Rush. So Rush's line ends at six and a third, five hits, one unearned run, two walks, four strikeouts. A terrific job out of Bob Rush in a very clutch situation. All right, so Uihara face Garcia. Garcia 0 for 2. Fly ball to center. Dawson easing over. He'll put this one away, and that makes two down. So now up comes Pettis. Pettis 1 for 3, an eventful day to say the least for him. Pettis has thrown out two runners at the plate. He has also been thrown out at the plate. Do not have Elias on speed dial to give them a call and see if they can find out how many other times that has happened in baseball playoff history. But regardless, Pettis, one for three, steps in here against Uyara. Doubled his last time up. Swung on a miss, but it gets away from Real Muto. Throw down to first and he will get him. So fortunately, it didn't get too far. Real Muto pounces quickly. In time to get Pettis. It is seventh inning stretch time. Stretch if you like. We're going to come back for the bottom half. Denver up 3-1. So Holland stays in. Lindor is going to lead things off here. Lindor one for one, two walks, a stolen base, 
It was cut down at the plate in the first. That one hit fairly well. The center Pettis coming on makes the play one down. So Pettis got a good jump on that. And here comes Wade Boggs. Boggs two for three on the day with an RBI. Pop this one up. Seeger moves over. He calls it. Puts it away. And that's two down. So Holland has been terrific thus far out of the pen. Here comes Pete Browning. Browning 0 for 2, but definitely a pivotal play in this game. Gunning down Gary Pettis at the plate with the tying run a couple of innings ago. 2-2 pitch. Tap back to the mound. Holland fields it himself. Throw. And he's safe. So Holland kind of muffed that one a little bit, but pounced on it once it got behind him. Browning busting it down the line, and it looked like a fairly soft throw from Holland, who didn't think Browning would get down the line that quick. They are graciously calling that an infield hit. So a two-out base runner, and that's it for Holland. He may have twisted himself awkwardly there. That was an awkward play all the way around. So in comes Armando Benitez. Benitez on the year, 5-5, five and five, three saves, a 4.92 earned run average. Benitez will strike out a ton. He will have bouts of wildness, and he also can be fairly susceptible to giving up the long ball. On a personal note, as a lifelong Mets fan, I saw enough of Armando Benitez to know that basically you could tell with the first batter <laughs> he faced in a game whether he was going to be great or horrible. There wasn't much middle ground. So Benitez comes in here, two outs, Browning on first. Here's Larry Doyle. Doyle one for two. And that one locks Doyle up strike three. So Benitez brings the gas. Doyle can't catch it. We head to the top of the eighth. Pilots trying to hold on. They lead 3-1 as they try to get this series even. All right, so Uihara stays in. He only needed six pitches to get his two outs upon coming into the game in the seventh. He will face Bill Hinchman. Hinchman's one for two. Heart of the order coming up here. Fly ball to center. Dawson has it tracked. He'll just wait for it. One down. Uihara, at one point, top closer in the league back when he was with the Los Angeles Lightning. So here's Dan Brothers. Brothers 0 for 3. That one hit to the right side. Base hit past the diving Doyle. So a one-out single for Dan Brothers. He's aboard, and that'll bring up Campanella. Well... A big spot for the best postseason player in league history, as I have said, probably ad nauseum during the course of doing these broadcasts. But Campanella really has been something special. 0 for 3 on the day, though. Facing Uihara, 1-2. Yanked down to third, Lindor with the play, throw to first, second, Doyle on to first, double play, 5-4-3. And Seattle is three outs away. We head to the bottom of the eighth. No runs, one hit, no errors, no way left on. The Pilots lead 3-1. to one. So Benitez stays on, and he's going to face McCovey. McCovey 0 for 2. Walked his last time up. High fly ball to center. Carrying a bit, but nowhere near far enough. Pettis is there, one away. So up comes Joe Cronin. Cronin is 0 for 3. He 
Struck out his last time up. Benitez misses way inside on the 3-1 pitch. So one out base runner. Cronin on. Benitez will now face Tony Oliva. My dog shaking it out over there. Oh, give me one second. My dog needs to go outside. It's right here next to me, though. Sorry about that. All right, so. Oh, my goodness. And this is the danger of doing broadcasts from home. <laughs> Well, anyway, don't mind the dog. I had to let the dogs out. So Benitez, two Olivo, one for three, two RBIs. 3-1 three, count. Olivo watches that one pass for ball four. So Benitez kind of doing Benitez things here. Two men on, and that'll bring up Andre Dawson. Dawson, one for three. So pair of walks now from Benitez. And he could bring himself into trouble here. Dawson, hot smash, diving, stop. Garcia knocks it down, but he's not going to have a play. Infield hit. The bases are loaded. Damaso Garcia saves a run there. Very interesting to see if they keep Benitez in this game. And they will. So living dangerously... Benitez will face JT Realmuto. Realmuto 0 for 3. Benitez certainly capable of getting the strikeout, and he could use that here. Infield is in. They're going to try to cut down the run if Realmuto puts this on the ground. 1 2. Line drive, base hit in the right field. One run will score. They're going to wave. They're going to test Clemente. And he's safe. Oliva gets in off. On contact, read that very well. Not a bad throw from Clemente at all. But two runs score, and the Denver Pilots have broken this one open. It is now 5-1. to one. So Armando Benitez pitches himself into trouble and then pays for it. And he's now going to kind of... Going to be hung out to dry here a little bit. Benitez still being kept in in a very questionable decision. Here's Francisco Lindor. Lindor, one for two, a pair of walks. Swung on and missed strike three. A little late for that. So Benitez fans Lindor. Two down. And now Benitez is going to come out of the game. Don Notabard is going to come in. Notabart on the season has been with three teams. New York, Chicago, and Seattle. His total number is 6-2, 5.25 earned run average in 56 appearances. Started with New York, went to Chicago, then ended up in Seattle. So the two men on still fall under Benitez's ledger. Nutterbart's going to come in to face Wade Boggs. Boggs, two for four with an RBI on the day. Strike three called. Well, you don't get Boggs looking that much, but it happens here. But the damage is done. Two more runs score. We're heading to the top of the ninth. Denver, down 2-1 in the series, leading Seattle here in game four, 5-1. <laughs> Blame the dog, yes. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Huge runs, the little tack-ons. And yes, just like with the Mets, that 2000 Subway Series, Mets and Yankees, that series was lost when Benitez blew game one. That's, that whole series was done because even if the Mets were coming back in that series, you knew they had completely lost Benitez for the entire series from that. When Benitez blew a save, you basically lost him for a week because he was so mentally fragile. You know, the guy's stuff was terrific. His splitter and his fastball, when he was on, the guy was untouchable. But mentally, the guy had nothing between the ears. So anyway, top of the ninth, Uihara is going to start this inning. 
Now, Uihara has already gone an inning and two-thirds. He's been terrific, and he has only thrown 23 pitches. But if you're going to extend Uihara here, you're basically going to definitely lose him for the next game. They do have a game tomorrow before the next off day in the series. But the priority, of course, is to get level first. So Uihara is going to start the inning. Gibson's going to step in for Seattle. Gibson one for three. Uihara deals. Ground ball a second. Doyle moves over. Throw to McCovey. One down. So up comes Clemente, now with one out, two outs away from Denver leveling this series. Clemente, one for two. Two-one pitch. That's in the center. That's going to be a base hit. So Clemente keeps Seattle alive, trying to get something going. And here comes Corey Seager. But that is going to be it now for Uehara. So they're going to let Bill Henry come in, which is a little bit of an odd call. I'm not sure Bill Henry is who he would have gone to here. We'll check a few things out, though. So Uehara, two innings, two hits, one strikeout. Again, the runner on first does belong to him. Bill Henry on the year. One and two, three saves, 4.31 earned run average in 59 appearances. So I'm going to go for the lefty-lefty matchup. Henry to face Seager. Seager, one for three. Smash to right. That's a base hit. So Corey Seager keeps the line moving. Doyle dives, can't come up with it. So 5-1, one out, two men on. The tying run has now reached the on-deck circle. But first, it's Evan Longoria. Longoria's 0 for 3. I'm going to take a quick peek here into the Denver bullpen. Lee Smith is out there. They've gone through their bullpen in these past couple games. So Raditz, Olsen, Byung Hung Kim. They're trying to avoid using them. Understandable to a point, but you have got to win this game. Lee Smith was horrible this season. His whip was over 1.8, which is almost absurd. So um, they're staying away from Smith here. They're going to let Henry try to take care of this. First and second. If another runner reaches, we'll see if that, if that holds true. Longoria, ground ball the third. Lindor. Lindor boots it. Lindor boots it. He was thinking about throwing before he fielded the ball, and the Seattle grinders have loaded the bases. The tying run will come to the plate. in the form of Damaso Garcia. Now, interestingly, Garcia, a weak hitter, a lifetime 223 hitter. He's only been in the league a couple years. And he's been in reserve for most of that time. But Garcia is 0 for 3. He is 2 for 15 in the series. You have Ivan Rodriguez, again, rookie. Pudge is only 21. He's just coming to the league. But that's quite a line of succession there from Roy Campanella to Pudge Rodriguez whenever the time comes for Campanella to move on in one fashion or another. Xander Bogarts and Brandon Inge, as well as Harry Stovey and Ora DeShafer on the, on the bench. So there are options there. And you could play Bogarts at second. Oh, and they now have decided to make that move. <laughs> so Bogarts is going to come in and pinch hit. I jumped, I jumped the gun there and hitting the button, apparently to check out the substitutions, because they are going to go to Bogarts. So Bogarts 0 for 1 in his one pinch hitting appearance of this series.
Henry is going to stay on, though. And he strikes out Bogarts. So all that talk about bringing in a pinch hitter goes for naught as Bogarts fails in the opportunity. And now, up comes Harry Stovey. So, Stovey steps in. He is one for two with an RBI off the bench in this series. He is kind of the last hope here. Two down, bases stacked. He is the tying run. Deron Johnson staying with Bill Henry here. And Henry misses inside on the 3-1 pitch. Ball four. Stolby walks. Run is forced home. Clemente comes in. Seager to third. Longoria to second. It is now a 5-2 ball game. And now the lead run comes to the plate. Denver not letting this be easy. Here is Bill Hinchman. Hinchman, 310 on the season, 22 homers, 82 RBIs. He is one for three on the day. Very questionable bullpen management here from Deron Johnson. Hinchman, fly ball to right. That's playable. Put away by Oliva, and the ball game is over. So Denver walks the tightrope. But they get out of it, and the Denver Pilots have tied the series at 2-2 against their defending champion Seattle Grinders. If you have not followed the ABL too much, this is the first year of expansion. Each league had two divisions previously. Denver was in Seattle's division until this season. The expansion added a third division in each league, and Denver was the team that was moved. So these guys have a rivalry going back several years. Denver led that division for the first five years of its existence until Denver came in, excuse me, until Seattle came into the league in the league's first expansion in 2022. So there is a rivalry here, and this series is playing out to suit it. So the final line score, Denver, five runs, nine hits, two errors. Seattle, two runs, eight hits, one error. Bob Rush... With the terrific start, gets the win. Rush, six and a third, five hits, one unearned run, two walks, four strikeouts. Hold for Koji Uihara. The loss goes to Tim Linscom. Linscom, five innings, five hits, three runs, five walks, and three strikeouts. And we are knotted up. Bob Rush gets player of the game honors. And again, the series is tied at two. So this was my first time doing this live broadcast. <laughs> yes, exactly. Lindor trying for the 5-4-3 to end it. Um, so thank you guys for coming in here, man. I appreciate it. And uh, I will, I'm going to try to be doing these as live streams, I think, uh, for, for the rest of the way. Because this, this, this was fun. I like doing it like this. Um, this is the first time doing it. So I appreciate you guys watching. Um, so basically the entire ABL playoffs are going to be done on the channel here. Other things coming up very, very soon. I'm going to do a reveal of the upcoming draft list for the ABL Amateur Draft. I'm also going to be running the Legend Sports Universe Football League offseason draft, uh, rookie draft. I'm going to be doing that in probably in the next couple of days, too. I do want to get back into that game as I put a lot of work into creating the LSUFL. So I do want to kind of get back into that. Um, but this and, this and the boxing stuff are kind of where I've been at for, for a bit. But um, all right. So thank you guys for joining. Again, I'll probably have another game up probably tomorrow, maybe two. We'll see. I appreciate it. Enjoy your days at work, guys. And uh, be good to each other. And we'll talk soon. Take care.